My name is Audrey, and today I'm going to teach you guys about factoring. So over here, we've got the graph of y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. You can see the graph here. Now, factoring is pretty much asking the question, where does y equal 0? So since we've got the graph in front of us, we can see that y equals 0 along the x-axis. And within this function, y equals 0 at this point and at this point. So that's going to be at negative 3, when x equals negative 3, and when x equals 5. But say you didn't have the graph. Say all you had was this equation. How can you find these numbers without looking at a graph? That's where factoring comes in. You can take this equation and put it into the form y equals x minus 5 times x plus 3. Now, we know that anything, any number, multiplied by 0 is equal to 0. So if we change this equation into two factors, two things being multiplied together, then we can say if any one of them is 0, the function will evaluate to 0. So when x minus 5 equals 0, or when x plus 3 equals 0, the function evaluates to 0. You can say add 5 to both sides, and you'll get x equals 5. At x equals 5, y equals 0. And you can subtract 3 from both sides over here to get x equals negative 3. And these are the values we got originally from looking at the graph. So now we need to figure out how to get from this equation, x squared minus 2x minus 15, to the factored equation, x minus 5 times x plus 3. So we're going to do that, and we're going to start with a method called the magic x method. So we've got y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. So using the magic x method, you put the constant, the value that does not have an x attached to it, at the top of your x. And you put this middle value, the value with 1x, at the bottom. So your x would look like this. Now, you want to find numbers on either side that multiply to the top number and add to the bottom number. So, if we've got 15, what are all of the factors of 15? There's 1 and 15, 2 is not a factor of 15, 3 and 5. And those are all the factors of 15. We've also got negative 15. So we can put the sign anywhere. We can put it here, we can put it here, here, here. As long as one of these values is negative, then it will multiply to a negative number. So looking at these numbers, either this set of factors or this set of factors, we need to figure out which one adds to 2 with a negative number in one of them. Sorry, adds to negative 2. You can see that's just not true for the first one. But if we look at the second set of factors, 3 plus 5 does not equal 2, negative 3 plus 5 does not equal negative 2, but 3 minus 5 equals negative 2. So over here, we can say 3 and negative 5 are our factors. And when we go back to our equation, we can say that it's x minus 5 times x plus 3. And if we take a look at what we got earlier, that is our original equation. So to recap, if you're factoring something like a squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all constants, they're all not variables, they're numbers. The first step 
is to find the factors of C. Then next, you want to find which factors of C add to B. And then you've got your factored equation. X plus or minus something <laughs> times X plus or minus something else. If the magic X method helps you, then definitely go around and go ahead and use it. Um, if you find that something else works fa better for you and you're faster with that, go ahead and use that. Remember, these values that you're finding, if you go ahead and find out where they equal zero, that's going to be where your graph intersects the x-axis or where your graph evaluates to zero.